Now, losing a pet can be absolutely devastating, but finding a way to remember them can be a way of uh, helping to cope with your grief. Um, what would you do? Would you do what apprentice star Louisa Zisman did after her horse sadly died? And that's to have him taxidermied. There she is. Louisa, it's good to talk to you. Absolutely fascinated to talk to you about the process. But first of all, I want you to tell us, because I know you absolutely adore horses. I know you've owned many horses. You've been riding since you were very young. But this horse, Madrona, was very, very special to you. Yeah. Tell us about him and why you fell in love with him. So... I've been riding, like you said, my whole life since I was four years old. Um, and I'd always, I suppose, like all little girls, you dream of that unicorn horse. Um, and when I was 16, I went to Spain with a friend and she bought um, a, a pre horse. It's the type of breed that Madrono is. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with them. And I swore that one day I'd go back and buy my dream horse. Um, and I did when I was 26. Um, I went back to Spain. I met the same woman who sold my friend her horse and she found me Madrono. And he was just amazing from the first time I met him. Um, he had this amazing long mane and he, he really was just a dream come true, not only to look at but to handle. He was like a, just a puppy dog and he'd lay down in his stable and I'd lay with him. And it's, I suppose if you're not horsey, it sounds a little bit strange because people think, oh, it's just a horse in a field. But no, I think when you're an animal signs, lover you, you and can see a horse what a lover, magnificent really... animal that uh, Madrono was and you can understand the love and the passion you had for him. But tell me about Madrono getting ill, getting sick and passing away. So when I first bought Madrono, I knew that he had melanomas, which are kind of cancerous lumps. And some horses can live with that for, for a long time and it doesn't affect them. Um, but I bought him anyway, knowing that. And so it... it came to light probably a couple of years into owning him that um, he needed treatment. So um, I started and I did do every single cancer treatment you can do on a horse. Um, he had operations, he had chemotherapy, he had special injections to, to try and stop the growth. Um, but in the end, um, it, they grew internally and he couldn't go to the toilet. Um, and so there was really nothing that I could do and I had to have him put to sleep. And I can, I can see, Louisa, even talking about that now is really upsetting for you. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you did your best by him, but you couldn't bear to be without him, could you? So this is when you made this decision that you wanted to have him preserved. Uh, tell us how you came about that decision. So, sorry. Oh, I know, I'm <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, I think I just... <laughs> It's so embarrassing. I think, I, I suppose everybody deals with grief in different ways. And he's so majestic and he's so beautiful. And I think I just couldn't bear to never see him again. And I've followed Simon for quite a long time. We've got a mutual friend and he's done things for that mutual friend um, and have admired his work and what, and what he does. And so when I knew that Madrono had to be put to sleep, um, I called Simon. I said, look, I just, I just couldn't bear to never see him again. It was just well, we like, see I don't him. know how to describe no, it. I just I wanted him... I just want to show people, before we talk very briefly to Simon, I just want to show everybody the moment that you were reunited with Madrono in his, in his new form. You want him just... You ready to see your... Oh, you're ready. It's OK! Oh, no! You like it. Well, Lisa, we can see that Madrono there is like a like a sculpture, like a like a work of art there. And so now we're going to see him uh, in the flesh. Uh, now we're going to see that, and we're going to talk to Simon, uh, who is the taxidermist <laughs> involved in all of that. And could I just ask you first of all, Louisa? Hi, Simon. What does it make you feel like standing beside your horse like that? What, what feeling do you get? I think it just makes me really happy because 
like you said, he's a work of art, he's a sculpture. And I think you go and you put a picture on your wall. And for me, it was, I just wanted him to live forever, I guess, and be like this amazing piece of art, this beautiful sculpture. And I was so privileged to own him. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a really nice feeling. It's quite comforting because I was quite grief stricken. I mean, I had quite a bad time after Madrono died, which I know some people think is really strange, but we are a nation of animal yeah. lovers. Um, so I hope some people well, can relate. I admire you what you've done. I, I think it's a beautiful piece of work, Simon. I personally would have it done to my own dog. My Thank wife you. is uh, somewhat so um, different about this, but we'll <laughs> probably go to court and get it sorted out. <laughs> Um, but, but, Simon, how would you describe it? How popular is this? We've, we've got about a minute to talk. How, how popular is this becoming? Taxiderm is becoming very popular in the last few years. And, uh, but something like this, it's been a real privilege to do an animal like this. It's absolutely beautiful. And how long did you it know, take you? How not long did it take you, Simon? the chance to do something like this. How long did it take you? It's about, if you added all the hours up, it's probably about two months' work. Wow. Two to three months' work to do it. And how much would it cost someone to have their dog or their cat or their hamster or their horse um, taxidermied? It depends on the size of the animal, really. Yeah, well, the smaller, the cheaper. Yeah, the smaller, the cheaper. <laughs> well, listen, you've got some huge animals there. We can see some more of your work. <laughs> I'm afraid we have to leave you because we've got to go to the weather and we've got to hit it on time. Louisa, I'm so glad you've got your Madrono back. And Simon, thank you very much for Beautiful. telling us all about it.